Hey everybody, it's Coop here with your Truly Local Advice this week. We're going to focus on the three types of investment income. Again, this is just the basic summarization of them. It's nothing crazy. And again, there's some other types of incomes, but we're just going to focus on those three. The first one being interest income. It's the thing that most people get because they have a savings account, they have a GIC, and it generates what's called a T5. So your financial institution will issue you saying, hey, here you go, congrats on the money you've made, but now Canada Revenue wants a piece of the money. So that's the least taxable avenue when it comes to investment income. Yes, you earn a percent in the rate of return, but 100% of that's added in income tax with no deduction capabilities. The second type of investment income is called dividends. Now, most um, Canadian corporations will offer this and it qualifies for what's called a dividend tax credit, but not all of them. So you do have to make sure that your investment it does qualify. So talk to your advisor, talk to your tax professional, and they can help you identify whether it does or does not. But that's a lot more tax efficient than your uh, interest income, which is again, is 100% added income tax with no tax credits or no tax capabilities. Um, the other thing it may qualify for, and you have to talk again to your professional, is that it may qualify for an investment fee de uh, deduction on top of all your other tax credits that you're essentially getting. So again, ask those questions, make sure you know what you're getting into when it comes to your investment. The third type, which is more common and actually the best in the three scenarios from a tax perspective is called capital gains. Capital gains is essentially what happens is when you buy an investment at X and it grows to Y, the difference you have to claim um, on your income tax as long as it's not in a tax sheltered avenue like a tax free savings or RSP. So basically how it works is that it's 50% included in income. At that point, you can see that out of those three options, having only to claim, even though you made X, or 50% of it is a more tax efficient means. So it does ha it have less impact on your circumstances than again, interest income or dividend income. Capital gains is something that essentially is, comes from investments, comes from property. So keep in mind that you gotta be mindful that if you do have a cottage, second property, or even in an, um, a business out of the home, it may expose your principal residency to some capital gains. So talk to your pro tax professional, talk to your financial advisor, just understand that there's different types of tax treatments when it comes to each one of those. Again, if it's not sheltered inside of a tax revenue uh, capability like a TVSA, RSP, or any of those circumstances. And again, that's the basic rundown. Interest, dividend, capital gains. Out of the three, capital gains is obviously the best when it comes to tax efficiencies. So ask away, make sure you understand your investments, and make sure that uh, you know what you're doing. So again, thanks for chiming in on the Truly Local Advice this week with Coop. See you next time.